Okay, we're moving into uh, section 6.6, which says fitting a quadratic model to data. We know how to complete the square. We know how to change from vertex form to standard. We know how to go from standard to vertex. So now, uh, fitting a quadratic model to data should sound <coughs> like some of the other fits we've done. We've done um, linear on our calculator. Um, so we're going to be using our calculator's piece of the puzzle today. But before we do that, we're going to deal with some quadratics. Okay, so starting with, we want to be able to find a pattern. Now if I told you that all your quadratics were going to be in the form x squared plus bx plus c, meaning um, the x squared term will stay x squared, but we might have a number um, for the b value, and another number for the c value. So we would have our quadratic, which is also called a trinomial, and we should, if it can be factored, if it has factors, be able to break it into those two factors that multiply to give us the x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, um, let's t talk about um, the pattern we use. Now, we foiled before whenever we've had binomials, so let's foil these two and see if we can find something here. Um, so, first times first would give us x squared. Outsides would be these two, would give us negative 4x. Insides, these two, negative 8x. And last times last would be a positive 32. Now, take a look what happens here. Um, we call it first outside, inside, last, or FOIL, which has been our shortcut to help us remember and keep things in order. But notice what happens. We have like terms, and those like terms now allow us to combine our O and our I terms. Our O and our I terms then get added together, combined, and become a new term, in this case, a negative 12x, and our x squared doesn't get added to anything, nor did our constant term or the last times last get added to anything. But notice that since the first term is only ones, we really only have to deal with that last term. Okay, now I want you to start thinking, hmm, well, 8 and 4 up here multiplied to give me the 32. But they also added to give me the 12 that was here. Let's do that one more time on a uh, different combination of factors. So here we go. First times first, x squared. Outsides, negative 7x. Insides would give us 6x. And last times last gives us negative 42. So again, we're drawing that direct comparison. Um, yeah, we have some terms in the middle that can be combined and the outside-inside terms add up, in this case, to a negative 1x, we would still have our x squared, and we would still have that negative 42. But that negative 7 and that positive 6 also multiplied together to give us that negative 42. So there definitely is a pattern here. All right, with that pattern established, let's now put it in more workable, speakable, terms. Every time we need to factor a trinomial that has a constant term of 1 with a middle term and a last term, we want to follow this setup. If we take the x and x, because we know it's a 1, it's the only choice, we want to be able to make this little chart effect. And we just said what multiplies to give me the last term in our trinomial has to add together to give us the middle term. And we're talking about in the trinomial. So our last term would be the c value, and the middle term would be this. It's the exact pattern we were just talking about. You add the two numbers together to get the middle term, and you multiply them to get the last. Now, the only other thing I'll say is, wait a minute. 
if you're multiplying and adding, and you had a number, let's say 6, how many ways are there to multiply to get 6? We're talking whole numbers only. Not too many. 1 and 6, 3 and 2, and all their combinations when you just switch the numbers around. You could use negative numbers also. But how many ways can you add to get a number? Now we're talking thousands. Don't forget, you got positives, negatives. You could be here all day trying to add a combination to get to your result of what you need. So, if this is the table or the chart we will use, then we should be able to try this on the next several examples of trinomials. So, we're going to do that right here. x squared plus 10x plus 16. So on the little side here, we'll say, what multiplies to give me 16 that adds to give me 10? So I'm thinking, hmm, I need the same number set for both. Hmm, all right. 8 times 2 is 16, and 8 plus 2 is also 10. So as soon as you find those factors, you can break into your two binomials, put them back in, and be done. Same thing over here. You say, what multiplies to give me my last term, which is negative 20, that also adds to give me my middle term, which was a 1. So you start thinking, OK, multiply first. What multiplies to give me negative 20? Well, 5 times 4 does. Uh, but negative, I need a negative sign there. Hey, they're only one apart, so let's put them in and let's figure this out. We need a positive 1, and one of these needs to be negative. So I need more positives than negatives. So in that case, I need a negative 4. And therefore, our two quantities are x plus 5 and x minus 4. So you can continue to do this process. So the rule is, what multiplies to give me the last term that adds to give me the middle term? And you should be able to do it on any combination of trinomial where your a term is 1, and you have a middle term B and C. You can do this as long as it can be factored. All right, so the other choice of problems is going to be today. Well, now that we have this quadratic data, let's um, solve some realistic problems. So if I had some data, and in this case, I've made some up with shapes. So look at what I have here. I have um, a series of shapes. We have a triangle. Then we have a quadrilateral, and then I have a pentagon. And so I'm talking about the number of sides or edges. Then I drew how many diagonals are possible in the shape. And in a triangle, we don't have any diagonals. In a quadrilateral, we have two diagonals. And then in a pentagon, you can see there were five. And I've even added a few other here a hexagon, a seven-sided object, how many diagonals and stuff can you draw? So we have them all accounted for. So the number of edges, n, and the number of diagonals, d. So first thing I would probably ask you to do is let's take that data, and let's see if we can find a pattern. Well, obviously you could sit there and draw shapes, but that would be forever, and I'm not sure you would get all the diagonals. So let's just take that data that we have and graph it. And if we do, we're getting a shape that appears to be like this. So we've got a 3, 0, which means we're on the axis. So this can't be um, one of our equations that never touches the axis. It appears that it's going up, and it appears to be some kind of curve. They are definitely not linear. So we're looking at you know a quadratic situation. Second degree, maybe. It looks like a parabola would fit in there nicely if I drew it. You know, um, It's just, where is that? You know, where is that point at? Um, so I think it fits pretty closely to a quadratic. So what you have to remember is we went to our calculator. So right now, you would take the data that we have and follow some of these steps. Stat, edit. We would put our data pieces in 3, 0, 4, 2, 5, 5, 6, 9, 7, 14 under the L1, L2. We would go back to stat, calculate. We're not doing linear regression like we have in the past, because this is definitely not a line. We're doing something called quadreg. Check it. 
Um, it is farther down the list, I mean, maybe right below your linear regression. Once you choose quad reg, hit enter. It's flashing on the screen. The cursor is saying, is this what you want? And so as soon as you do that, the calculator, again, will spit out an equation in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, so our standard form of a quadratic. It will then also spit out your a, b, c, r squared values. So double check it. Hit calculate. See what you get. I believe I can show you what I got here momentarily. Give everybody a chance. All right, so you should have something on the screen. Remember the A values, if they are fairly messy, you will round them. But let's see what we have. I've got in this case an A value of 0.5, a B of negative 1.5, a C of 0, and then R squared is 1. So that would mean we could now say our equation of y equals 0.5x squared plus a negative 1.5x plus 0, so I don't even have to add that if I want, would have to be the model, the equation that represents this shape and diagonal situation. So if I now suddenly asked, well, how many diagonals does a 12-gon have? You should know that n, or our x value in this case, is our number of edges, and d was our number of diagonals. So if you put a 12 in for x into our equation and solved it, you should be able to give me a good approximation of how many diagonals you could draw in a 12-sided figure. All right, so we've given you a little work in factoring review to start. We've given you now how to use your calculator to do a quadratic model, very similar to linear regression, and you should be good to go um, for most of the problems in this section. So if you have any questions, bring those to class, and we could do another example, especially if you have questions with the calculator.